Well, looks like you're new to the game. First, let me introduce myself. I'm Captain Falco, a long-time Sea of Thieves content creator, speculation, lore, news, and videos like this. Tutorials. Now, I did make a new player tutorial many moons ago, but this is somewhat outdated now and deserves a rehash. So, here we are. Now, first things first, this here is called a collector's chest. It's called this because you can collect things in it, such as small bits of loot. I'll pick this up and place it here. Don't ask why, I'll explain later. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to presume you've already played through the onboarding maiden voyage. If you have not, please do. It teaches you the basics of ship movement, which means I don't need to write the script to tell you about how to do that because I'm lazy. So when you start Sea of Thieves, you'll land on an outpost. All outposts are the same and come with three trading companies, the Order of Souls, the Gold Hoarders, and the Merchant Alliance. You might land on Port Merrick, and you can tell the difference instantly because it looks much nicer and is about 10 times harder to find anything. But ignoring the thrills, it's just like any other outpost. These are your main quest vendors, who will assign you an adventure for their faction. This used to be the only lucrative way to level up back in the day, but these days, not so much. As a fresh-faced swabby to see of thieves, my first bit of advice is to cruise over to this very distinctive glowy hut. The books that are placed here will send you on epic adventures, which was part of the Disney crossover with Pirate's Life. Just click on them and it will send you off on a massive story-driven adventure. Honestly, I envy anyone new being able to just go straight into this. We didn't have things like this back in my day! The great thing is with this story-driven content, known as Tall Tales, is they'll teach you a lot about some fundamental mechanics within the game. Plus, they're just fun, so give them a go. It's important to note that within Sea of Thieves, you are never safe from enemy players. But every time you go through one of these portals, you are 100% safe. So it's a good chilled out environment to hone your skills. Meanwhile, the collector's chest is alone and wonders why you left it there. Now onto the actual sandbox. As a new player, as I suggested, it's probably not a great idea to start with quests given by faction representatives. Don't bother touching these quests until your levels are a lot higher. The time invested and the loot you get from it it is really not worth it. Voyages have essentially become filler content these days. My suggestion is, taking a look at the map, you'll notice these things called shrines and treasuries. Also, fortresses. These mini-events are made for new or casual players, and will bag you much better loot than doing faction missions. The goal is, in Sea of Thieves, is to accumulate level 50 or beyond in at least three of any of the factions. The Order of Souls, Gold Hoarders, and Merchant Alliance we have already talked about, but there are three other factions. The Reaper's Bones, whose outpost is stationed here, who are supposed to be a PvP faction, but they're mostly veteran loot hoarders who run away from any side of combat, and the Hunter's Call, who essentially buy any fish or meat from you. Lastly, Athena's Fortune, who you can only work for when you reach level 50 in any of these three factions, but I won't ruin what happens when you get to this milestone. For the purposes of this tutorial, I would advise not to choosing Reapers or Hunter's Call as your main factions to start with. Stick with the Order of Souls, the Gold Hoarders, and the Merchant Alliance. But what was the reason for leaving the Collector's Chest that, as a new player, your goal is to accumulate 250,000 gold? The reason for this is it allows you to purchase a vessel. Doing so comes with three benefits. You can name your ship, you can save your cosmetics to your ship which will appear every time you log on, and the most lucrative reason, you can use the Sovereign's Tent at any outpost to sell your loot, which speeds up the process so much more with their harpoon assistance. Plus, they ferry the loot you sell to them to the correct faction representatives. So, no more running around the island. Good times! Which is especially prevalent for Port Merrick. You also want to gun for level 15 in any faction, as this will unlock an emissary flag for that faction, which can be bought from any of the faction reps at level 15. Don't worry, you only need to purchase this once, and once you have the flag, you can vote on the table near the faction representative, and a flag will be raised on your ship. This flag will increase in level as you gain loot from that faction, and with each level means a multiplier to your reputation and gold on hand in. However, be aware that Reapers, the supposed PvP faction, have the advantage of seeing any emissary on their map when they reach level 5. So if you're an emissary for any other faction, and you see this on your map, they know 
know where you are. However, if they're docked here, don't worry about it, they'll be there for days. So let's start your money laundering adventure by sailing over to any one of these fortresses dotted around the map. These forts are filled with phantoms that die in one hit from any gun. After a few waves, a boss will appear and he will drop a key to open the vault down below. The vault will give you an even number of every faction's loot requests. Even though it's spectral, don't worry about that, it's scientific. My suggestion is to stay on top of the forts at all times and kill the phantoms as they approach. This way you can keep an eye on the horizon for, well, pirates. You are playing a pirate game after all. Sail back to any outpost with your loot and begin handing in. Now you'll notice that you'll start to gain reputation with all factions by doing this, and even more than you would if you'd picked up a quest. So that's nice. But why did you leave the collector's chest on the shoreline at the beginning of the video? Alternatively, if you want a much more chilled out experience, dive down to either a shrine or a treasury. A shrine is a sort of puzzle-based adventure that will reward you loot, and a treasury sets you up against waves of enemies, which ends with a boss, which then unlocks a vault very similar to the fortresses, just less spectral and more, well, seafood. The reason why these are much more chilled out is because of this one very helpful hint. When arriving at this location, your ship stays above the waterline whilst you're below. And I bet you're thinking, but how can I protect it? Well, you don't have to. Once you get down into either a shrine or treasury, if you die, you'll respawn down here and not on your ship. Plus, all loot you find down here can be deposited into a mermaid statue. This mermaid statue will send a mermaid with a pink smoke beacon above its head to the surface and it will stay here until only you interact with it. Once you do, the loot spawns and you can pick it up with your ship's harpoons. So this means, once you're down in a shrine or treasury, you can scuttle your ship like this. Don't press this button. Just don't, don't press this button. Press this one. And to any passers-by, they'll have no idea you're down here. Once the shrine or treasury is done and you have deposited your loot, use the secondary prompt on the mermaid to spawn back to your vessel. Sail back over to the shrine, pick up your loot, and nobody knew what you just did. Perfect. Using these two methods, you'll accumulate enough money and beyond to purchase your very first vessel. And if you've done the tall tales from like I suggested at the start, you should have a nice collection of cosmetics ready to place on your ship by interacting with this chest at every outpost. But why did you leave the collector's chest at the- Now this tutorial is really all about the basics, the very first things I believe you should be doing as a new player. There is still so much on the horizon for you to do. You'll notice on your travels you may see some strange clouds or tall tornadoes. These are world events, and although I can't tell you not to do them, you're probably going to run into a hard time, so I would suggest avoiding them for now. That said though, there will be tutorials coming out very soon about each and every world event within the game. You'll also get an occasional surprise visit from either a big massive shark, a skeleton ship, or some calamari. I shall also be covering these in some tutorials. Until then, I'm Captain Falcor, and remember to always keep your eye on the horizon, because this is a pirate game. Just have fun with it. That's why you're playing a game. Oh, wait, sorry. I almost forgot about the collector's chest. You're probably wondering why I put this here. Let's open it. It's a subscribe button. Huh? Huh? Jesus. <laughs> you see, you see what I, you see what I, you see what I did? Uh, you s there? <laughs> uh. Okay, this sounded a lot funnier in my head.